Is your health part of your business plan? You might have big dreams to grow an empire of a business, but if you're not prioritizing your health along the way by thinking about things like sleep and energy, food and self-care, it won't even matter. I am so excited to have Melissa Dealey here with me today to talk to you about health and wellness as an entrepreneur and how listening to your body is one of the best ways that you can spend your time. Welcome to the Entrepreneur Success Summit interview series. I'm your host, Kelly Sinclair, aka the fairy brand mother, working with passionate entrepreneurs to get visibility for your brand, your business and your purpose. So excited to bring this interview series to you, talking with some experts from around the globe on some very important topics. And Melissa Dealey is an integrative health practitioner, a registered health coach, a speaker, and a host of her own podcast called Don't Wait for Your Wake Up Call. Welcome, Melissa. Thank you so much, Kelly. I'm excited to be here. Yes, this is going to be so exciting. And I love asking one of my favorite questions because it sometimes is hard for people. So we always hear how everyone responds because when you, when you think about your brand, you have to be able to answer this question. Tell us what you do and who you help. So I, what I do is I help people get to the root cause of their health issue. And who do I help? I help predominantly people that are struggling with digestive issues, we eat food three times a day. And it's amazing how many people out there are popping antacids like candy or have pain after eating or bloating or gas or just other discomfort. And the other part of the population I help are women going through menopause because we all go through that and we accept it as normal and tolerate the symptoms and issues that we're dealing with not realizing we can actually do something about it and rebalance our hormones and then regain our vitality and love of life. And we don't have to suffer. Mm, That's so true. We just eat, feel bad, continue on going on with our lives as we don't pay attention. Right. Exactly. And And we see everybody else going through it. And we kind of think that it's just part of being a woman that we have to suffer. It starts even in, you know, our young girls, and you know PMS is normalized, right? PMS is actually a sign that the body's out of balance. And if we rebalance those hormones, we don't have to suffer with PMS either. And people just aren't aware of that. And so that's part of the education that I bring and that I feel is so necessary. When it comes to our health, we haven't been taught a lot. We've been, what we've been taught is you don't feel well, you go to the doctor, they give you a pill and you get better, right? And for anything else, we suffer through. And the reality is, is there's so much health education that could be offered and that I try to offer through my podcast and through my YouTube health hacks to let people know that they, there's small steps they can take every day to be improving their health. And sometimes it's habits they have to change that are unknowingly negatively impacting their health. But when we know better, we do better. And mm-hmm. we just replace that it's not necessarily a bad habit, but it's impacting their health. As an example, you know, 70 million Americans struggle with sleep, right? Well, there's so many things we do in our day that are negatively impacting our sleep. And when we understand what they are, we can make that choice to replace them with something that is going to benefit our sleep if that's important to us. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about entrepreneurs specifically. So if you work with, you know, business owners, Mm -hmm. we are busy, we are putting a lot of pressure on ourselves, We are trying to do all the things all the time. So what are some of the things that you see happening within that particular sort of group of people? Um, And what's maybe like one top uh, piece of advice that you would have? So what I see happening there is a passion for the business, the drive to build it to succeed. But in that process, we are uh, highly stressed, wearing too many hats and we're not taking steps to mitigate that stress. We're always going to have stress, but it's about balancing it, right? It's not about this endless stress that just stacks on top of each other until we're in burnout. How many people do end up in burnout, right? They go, 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 go until one day they just can't get out of bed. Mm. And so it's, we have the signs along the way, our body talks to us, but Mm -hmm. when we're in that go, 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 go mode, 
we're not necessarily listening to those signs. And sometimes we're just writing those signs off as aging or genetics or seasonal allergies. We're very quick to write off some of the symptoms, right? What we really have to come back to is recognize that our body is talking to us and we need to pay attention. And the body initially will send very gentle messages in the form of a feather. But if we don't listen, it's going to thump you with a brick. And if we still don't listen, watch out for that wrecking ball because that's what happens. But when we listen, when it's a feather, it's so much easier to, you know, course direct, right? Right. So Just what like, would you suggest? Like, what, what are some of those, like, what's maybe an example or how do we actually listen? What do you tell people to do? So there's for every single person, the signs are different. It could be headaches. It could be starting to get daily headaches. It could be, you know, now needing to have a nap every afternoon or feeling like you need that nap every afternoon, but instead of taking that nap, it's reaching for a chocolate bar. Well, in that moment, is the chocolate bar the best option or is there something more that we could be doing, right? Understanding our energy dips and flows. So we all need seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Sleep boosts our immune system. It keeps our gut balance healthy and our whole microbial ecosystem in our gut is there for benefiting us to allow us to thrive to break down our food to get the nutrients from the food which provide us energy into our cells right we get our energy from our food and we get it from sleep how many people are walking around fatigued exhausted waking up exhausted how can you build a business in this state right so when we look after starting looking after sleep I recommend people schedule their day around their sleep. It is that important. And we need seven to nine hours of sleep a night. And I know there's going to people be people out there listening, going, I don't, I'm fine on six. You might be fine on six right now until you're not. Because on six, you're still breaking down your immune system. You're still causing your gut to break down good bacteria, which eventually will result in an imbalanced gut. So sleep is absolutely key. But then optimizing that sleep is just as important. How much coffee are you drinking in a day? <laughs> Start, you know, waking I'm up tired, <laughs> <laughs> waking up tired, and then you're dependent on that coffee to kickstart the brain, right? When I work with people, I undo that coffee habit. We all have different um, caffeine tolerance levels. And so for some people, they can go back to coffee. But for some people, when I get them off coffee, they're like, I never want to go back. I had no idea what it was doing to my energy levels and my sleep because coffee has an eight hour half-life. So if you have that first cup of coffee at say 7 a.m. to kickstart your brain and get you going, half of that is still in your blood at 3 p.m. Half of that is still in your blood at 11 p.m. Now that's one cup of coffee. How many more did you have through the day as your energy waned, right? Or when your energy is waning, yeah, right. And you're not alone. There's a lot of people drinking a lot of coffee. So all of that's running around in your bloodstream. And are you lying in bed awake at nighttime when you know you should be going to bed, but you're not falling asleep? And it's not just the coffee. It's also that sugar combination, because somewhere in there, there was probably a sugary treat through the day, whether it's a muffin or a chocolate bar or whatever. Right. So then we're not sleeping. So then we do it all again the next day. But when we actually break the coffee habit, and I help people wean off it so we don't have major headaches. When we break that coffee habit, people start sleeping better. They wake up feeling much more energized and they're finding they can get through their day. And for you know, some people, they're like, I really like the flavor of coffee. Great, let's do decaf. For other people, they're not as impacted and they could maybe have a cup of coffee or two a day. But for mm -hmm. some people, it's really impacting their sleep. So we have to focus on sleep and there's many more tips I have around sleep besides just coffee, but that's a big one because it impacts so many people, right? Yeah. And you know, I can feel myself like resisting, even listening to what you're saying. So I'm like, I love coffee. Like I don't necessarily feel like I need it. It's more mm -hmm. like the companion to my morning routine where right. I, you know, if I go for my walk and then I come back and I have a coffee and I do my morning planning, like I'm making excuses. I don't know. Like, I don't even know how to tell what is my caffeine tolerance. I, I could drink. I don't drink it past noon typically myself, but um, yeah. How do you even find that out? Well, going off it is a key way of determining how um, much tolerance you have oh, to it. 
Yeah. Right? Okay. And well, we- I mean, I didn't drink coffee when I was pregnant, so, and that wasn't a problem. <laughs> right. And how much better are you sleeping when you're not drinking coffee? How much more refreshed are you feeling when you wake up when you're not drinking coffee? Mm. And for people, yes, it's a morning companion. It's a habit. Can we replace it with a better serving habit? Can decaf be the option if we're looking for the flavor, right? And for some people that like, oh, can't do decaf, well, that's a real clue that there's a caffeine addiction in there, right? right. So, it, you know, it, don't tell me that I'm okay with my coffee, but then not be able to consider decaf, right? So that all affects sleep and sleep is so important. And sleep also helps us be more stress resilient mm. now. Running a business is very stressful as well. I know I run a business too. There's always stress in our lives and there's good stresses too. But what we have to be able to do is balance our stresses out. It can't just be stress after stress after stress stacking on top of each other because again, that's where we burn out our adrenals and we can't get out of bed. So what can we be doing to you know, balance out that stress? Self-care. I know that's a coin phrase. We hear a lot of it and people are like, I don't have time for that. Right. Yep. But for me to make the time for it, I had to come up with a mantra for myself. And my mantra is that self-care is the most selfless act because it allows me to show up and give the world the best of me instead of what's left of me. Ooh, I love that. Give the world what the best of me instead of what's left of me. Cause we can all relate to that. We know how it feels to be drained, to be like, just everybody's always asking. I feel like I've yelled at my kids so many times this week saying, how come every time you open your mouth, you're asking me for something? What's for dinner? What can I do this? Can I play with my friends? And I'm like, stop taking more. I have no more. Exactly. We can't serve from an empty cup, right? Yes. And I mean, I wish I'd known this when my children were little back in my corporate world day, I was there, you know, doing all of those things that now I'm helping people to make Um, changes in their lives. So I know we can make changes in their lives because I've done it myself. And what I really noticed after creating that mantra for myself and then scheduling my self-care time, I noticed that my kids would still push my buttons. Their behavior didn't change. My reaction to that changed and I wasn't yelling anymore, right? Because I was coming from a calmer state because now my cup was full. And so for me, I like to do my self-care in the morning because I get up, it's my time and it's done for the day. And I've looked after me and now I'm ready to serve my clients all day long. Other people like to do it in the evening time. That's fine. Some people might like to do it on their lunch hour. Some people might not have an hour, but you could take 15 minutes several times a day, right? And I always get, I don't have time. But the reality is, is when we make the time and we schedule it, even if you start with 10 minutes, five minutes, You'll start to notice as you do this daily, that that five minutes, that 10 minutes calms the body, calms the brain, and you can then get out of the state of overwhelm and you can be more focused. You can get more done. So you're more productive. So now you're saving time and that allows you more time to add to your self-care time. So over time, you can slowly build up your self-care time. You know what I think I'm hearing you say as well is is that label, like labeling it that. So Mm -hmm. notice, so for me, I walk my kids to school every day. That's very important to me. Mm -hmm. A for the exercise, B for the empowerment of, I have the flexibility to do that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I walk home along the ridge and there's this beautiful view and I kind of have like a little peaceful moment in nature. And I never even thought about calling that self-care time. But I almost feel like if I did, I'd be like, Mm -hmm. look at me, I have achieved that. And and I like Mm -hmm. to be able to like, feel like I've accomplished something. Right. So Mm -hmm. it's almost like looking at what what are you already doing and can you label it as self-care? Can you, can you, you know, acknowledge that it is part, it is productive because I mean, there's a whole other conversation to have about personal productivity and how we all don't feel like that's even a thing. Right. I always have to bring myself back to that. No, I'm going to start work a little later. I'm going to make sure I do my journal. I'm going to make sure that I do these things that feel good for me and get me into a good space so that I'm not jumping into the day and just like reacting to emails or social media or whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. So I I love that suggestion. I wanted to ask you one other question, which is Mm -hmm. what is the most surprising thing that people discover when they work with you? They discover that they can listen to their body. 
and then they can create more awareness around the way their body is talking to them. And it's very often around food and understanding what foods make them feel good, what foods give them energy and what foods are draining their energy. Because we so often eat mindlessly and we don't pay attention and we eat out of habit and we just eat what's easy and convenient, right? But when I work with clients, I'm helping them change the way they're eating to get nutrient dense foods so they can last from one meal period to the next and not have to have snacks in between. That's how it should be, right? Digestion should have a, a chance to finish long before the next meal goes in. But especially during COVID, we all work from home. The fridge is over here. We're just grazing all the time, right? So, and it's all mindless. So we don't think about it. So when I work with people, I get them to step back and just create that awareness so that they do know that their body's talking to them and that then they have choices to make. Mm -hmm. You know, I've totally believe that because even just having this conversation, it's already bringing awareness to the fact that you can think about that. It's just, it's just something that's currently subconscious. And so it takes a little bit of mind bending to get used to the idea. Right. So thank you for sharing that tip and thank you for the wonderful advice. And I know you have tons more, um, on your social media channels and in your online world. So tell us, and I'll make sure that I put it in the caption as well, where people can find you online. So uh, my website is simply yourguidedhealthjourney.com. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as Guided Health Journey. I'm on LinkedIn as Melissa Dealey. And I've actually just launched my YouTube channel. So I'm working to get my 100 subscribers so I can brand it because right now that's this long email or a long URL. Um, But I can provide that to you so you can drop it in and um, feel free to subscribe because I'm putting all of my podcasts there as well as I've started doing one minute health hacks to bring these little tips to people in just one minute, because I know you're busy of uh, things that you can implement in your day as you choose to step into prioritizing your health. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Melissa. I'm looking forward to staying connected with you and for our visitors, watchers, wherever, however you're seeing this video right now um, to connect with you as well. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me.